Hey guys, it's Daniel from VoiceFlow. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use our knowledge base API. So the API that's actually powering our knowledge base to do some more advanced functionalities, like actually include the source um, that a answer came from. So you can see here, I asked when should I use GPT-4. It was able to give me a response based on all of my articles that I've got on my website. And not only that, but it's actually able to give me the article that it pulled the information from. So you can see that this is the article written by Dennis on our blog that it was coming from. So to use this, we're making use of VoiceFlow's uh, Knowledge Base Preview API. So this is the API that the Knowledge Base uses, and it gives you a lot more details than just using the Knowledge Base in the tool itself. So in our project, uh, you can see that here, we've got our Knowledge Base. So our Knowledge Base has got all the articles from our website. You can add articles uh, just using the functions here. And in the actual tool itself, uh, we're using the capture step here to capture a user's question and just save it into this last utterance variable. Then what we're doing is we're making an API call here. And this API key uh, can be found in the integration section. So every one for every project is different. So this is for this project. So once you go into the API section here, uh, you can use any of these. They're all the same API key. Just copy it, uh, and then you can use that in the call. You'll notice that the call itself uh, really just expects the API key and then a question. And so here in our project, uh, in the actual API step itself, and you'll be able to download this in the, uh, in the template, is that I've got question last utterance here um, that just has the last utterance from the capture step. Within the API step before we get there, you'll notice that at the bottom, we're actually using these capture response functions to capture information from the API response and save them into variables. So if I actually make a test request here and I say, uh, when should I use GPT-4? You'll see that the response includes a number of different pieces to it. So Normally on the front end, this is the answer that you would see and it's summarized from all the pieces of information. On the back end, what's happening is when you upload documents to the knowledge base and voice flow, they're turned into chunks. And those chunks are basically like pieces of the document itself, just because the huge, the whole document is just too big. So they're broken down into small pieces. And when you type something in, it looks through those pieces, determines what's most relevant, and then actually sends that to your model, whether it's Claude or GPT, to then summarize into this output answer. So this API is giving you a lot more granular information about where that answer is coming from. So here we can see that there is one, two, three chunks that it pulled the answer from, and it actually gives us the URL that it came from. So here we can see that they all came from the same URL, just different parts of the same article. So now in VoiceFlow, we're actually gonna go and save those two variables. So the entire API response is captured in response already. So we'll say response.output. We wanna save the, you know, a big chunk of it into content. We'll save the first chunk the source name, so the URL, into source name, type into type, and so on. From there, in the JavaScript step, what we're looking at is we're saying, if content is zero, then you're gonna wanna take uh, like a, a different path. And so uh, then we're using our logic step here to say, cool, if content is zero, uh, we're gonna go down this path here. If answer found, it's gonna go down this path. So this means that if a no answer is found, then in the response AI step, we're just gonna use a general AI model to answer a user's question. So this is almost like a default. You don't really need this, but we should put this here just in case we don't have the answer to the question. If the answer is found, we basically tell uh, an AI model, in this case, GPT 3.5, to say, hey, take this content and just reformat it to be a bit more readable to the user. And then we actually go and give the user the article itself. So in this piece of logic, we are saying that we want the chunk score, which is kind of like a confidence score, to be greater than 0.79. If it's above 80%, we're pretty confident that the article is uh, going to answer the user's question. Um, if it's lower than this, it might be that, you know, uh, multiple articles were actually used to summarize the answer, and it maybe took a little bit of piece of information from different articles, and you, we can't just provide one article to the user. So we just put this here as a little fail-safe. If it's successful and we know that we have a high confidence, we're using a set step here because we don't actually get the article name. So I just told the AI model to say, hey, look at the URL. Uh, and just generate an article name for it. And then we're using our card step. So that can be found over here in talk card to actually include a link uh, and a little piece, uh, a little card for the user. And so this includes a name, includes uh, a little description here, a button that says read more. If they click it, it opens the URL. So that's how you use the template. Again, you can go ahead, download this, just open this up, put your own API key in here um, and you should be good to go. Uh, if you have any questions, always feel free to join our Discord or uh, just hit our, our own support chat uh, in the bottom right here that's actually powered by VoiceFlow. Um, and we're